This is what bodybuilders don't tell you about high volume training. What's up guys, this is Jay Vincent here. And in today's video, I'm gonna share some secrets that most top level bodybuilders don't really tell you when it comes to high volume training and why it seems to work well for them. So of course, let's cover the basic definition of high volume training. What's it actually mean? Generally, it means doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps, and a lot of workouts per week. Now this is under the assumption that more exercise produces better muscle growth. Although at face value that seems to make sense, but of course what the literature actually shows is there is very quickly a point of diminishing returns when it comes to high volume training. And in today's video, I'm going to explain physiologically why that is. So if you were to bust open one of your favorite fitness magazines, which are now a thing of the past, you would see a lot of workouts that are presented by top level bodybuilders with the assumption that if you followed what they did, you would see better results. Or some people may foolishly believe they'd actually see the same results if they followed one of these bodybuilders workouts in some of these magazines. But first of all, I gotta fill you guys in on something. A lot of the workouts written in those magazines and bodybuilding.com and all these other forums and websites, they're not actually the workouts that the bodybuilders are doing. This was a tactic that magazines used to use in the past in order to get you to buy the magazine so that way they could expose you to the plethora of supplements and services and all kinds of other nonsense in the catalog. Believe it or not, bodybuilding magazines were classified as catalogs. And if you look through a couple of pages, you'll notice most of it are advertising. And a lot of these workouts would seem very long, lots of sets, lots of reps, training almost every single day per week with the promise that if you follow Jay Cutler's program, well, you'd see tremendous muscle growth too. Now with that aside, it is true. A lot of bodybuilders do relatively high volume workouts, but they see great results from it. But of course, in my camp, the high intensity training camp, I tell people not to do super high volume workouts. It's the opposite of what a lot of these bodybuilders are doing and what they think works. Now keep in mind, it does work, but I'm gonna tell you why. So first of all, we need to realize exercise is a stress. Exercise itself is a negative event on the body. It's a bad thing for the body to experience. You're weakening your muscles. You're producing localized and systemic inflammation. You're depleting your body of recovery resources, glycogen, water, all kinds of things. You're taxing your nervous system. Nothing about the workout itself actually produces anything beneficial directly as you're doing it. The stress accumulated from the workout stimulates a huge biochemical signal that tells your body to improve while it's resting. So the workout itself is very stressful. It doesn't produce anything for your body initially. It's only after your body rests, recovers, and rebuilds that the benefit from training takes place. With every repetition, every set, and every workout, you are accumulating stress in the form of microtrauma or damage to your muscle fiber, systemic and localized inflammation, both in your body as a whole and directly in the muscle groups you're working. You're also dehydrating your body, taxing the nervous system, depleting glycogen and blood sugar. So since the workout is so stressful on your body, wouldn't it make sense to want the minimum amount of stress with the maximum amount of benefit? This is where high intensity training comes into play. You actually want the fewest amount of sets, the fewest amount of reps, and the fewest amount of workout days per week to reduce the negative side effects as much as possible and stimulate the positive benefit. High volume training does literally the opposite of that. People who promote high volume training think that there's a linear relationship between how much you train and how big your muscles get, but it's just not true. Now you might be asking yourself, if so many people do it, then how does it work? Now the first reason comes down to something called selection bias or survivorship bias. Now say you take 100,000 aspiring bodybuilders and they all go to the gym and they all start to do whatever workout program they initially do. Since most of the fitness industry is just the blind leading the blind, they're probably gonna adopt something they see in one of these magazines or something some bodybuilder is doing and try to replicate the workout. Now out of 100,000 people, you're gonna have a bell curve. You're gonna have some people who respond extremely well, some people who get moderate results, and some people that get literally no results or even worse results. You don't see all the individuals that try this workout program and fail. You only see the ones with tremendous genetics and a great genetic propensity to building muscle literally survive this type of workout and saw a good benefit from it. So why do a lot of bodybuilders do this type of workout? Number one, they're genetically predisposed to growing muscle quite easily. And almost anything they do is going to result in muscle growth. 
Now, if an aspiring bodybuilder or a fitness influencer begins a workout, gets tremendously good feedback, they have no reason to change their workout. If it worked in the past, they assume it's gonna continue to work well into the future. So simply put, basically you are seeing the outlier of a high volume program that actually made it work. And you're not seeing the 95% plus who saw poor results from it. Just a simple logical thinking error. The second reason a lot of these top bodybuilders are able to do this high volume training and see good results from it is of course, the PED use. Not only will anabolic performance enhancing drugs improve your ability to respond and grow from the workout, it will also drastically enhance your recovery ability from the workout. So of course, we all know top level bodybuilders and probably most fitness influencers are using PED. And this is making them relatively resilient to all this inflammation and all this muscle damage by rapidly increasing their tolerance and the recovery ability. One particular PED that does this extremely well is growth hormone. I talked to competitive bodybuilders over the last 10 years, and they told me that as soon as they started to add growth hormone into their overall cycle, it became almost impossible for them to overtrain. They'd go to the gym in the morning, do a brutal leg workout, wait a few hours, eat, and then go back in the evening, do the same workout again, fully refreshed. So the use of this growth hormone makes it nearly impossible to overtrain. Now a natural individual, or even somebody who's just on TRT, that is not enough. They're not going to be able to tolerate this amount of muscle damage and inflammation and recover quickly enough to do high volume workouts every single day. So what most people end up doing is just kind of half-assed workouts in order to return every single day and follow whichever program that they've got written down in their notebook without realizing that pulling back on the effort and doing a half-assed workout is literally the opposite of what you wanna do. You absolutely want to push as hard as you possibly can in every exercise, in every set, and then adjust the volume and the frequency to accommodate you pushing hard, which almost always results in a reduction in both volume and frequency. A lot of people say high intensity training doesn't work for naturals. It only works if you're enhanced. See, this logic is literally backward. Enhanced individuals have a much higher recovery ability, being able to tolerate higher volume workouts done more frequently. And that is why volume training actually only works for enhanced individuals. High intensity training takes into account limited recovery ability of natural individuals because they don't have the bees that are enhancing their recovery so substantially. And that is why high intensity training works way better for natural people. Now, what works better for bodybuilders who are in hand, high intensity training or volume training? The answer is both. They both work probably equally the same. The only difference is a person doing high intensity training is gonna spend about one fifth of the time in the gym to get the same results as somebody who's doing high volume training. A typical high intensity training workout might be two, three workouts a week, one to two sets of failure of each exercise, relatively short workouts, accumulating for no more than, at tops, three hours of total training a week. Now a higher volume program, that's an hour to an hour and a half in the gym nearly every day. So we're looking at 10 hours spent in the gym for high volume training versus a maximum of three for high intensity training, both for probably the same result. So why don't more bodybuilders do high intensity training. It's because whatever they did in the beginning worked, so why would they change it? And most bodybuilders don't really want to save time. Most bodybuilders like going to the gym. They like being there. It's where they enjoy themselves. It's part of their life and their identity. And in some cases, it's their actual job. So why would they try a program that kept them out of the gym when they like going more? That's the reason, I believe, a lot of top level bodybuilders or even influencers don't do high intensity training. They gotta be in the gym creating content all the time. And they probably like doing it. So why would they start a program where they couldn't make as much content? But at the end of the day, if you're a natural trainee, not a professional athlete, not a professional bodybuilder, you're going to want to do high intensity training because it's going to give you the best stimulus with the least amount of time spent in the gym. And I can almost promise you, if you are a natural trainee and you try one of these high volume programs, you might get a little bit of feedback in the beginning. You might get some results, but then you'd be like most of these other gym goers who've been going to the gym for five or 10 years without any significant change. 
If this sounds like you, I highly encourage you to join my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. I will make a custom workout and nutrition plan and teach you how to stimulate your muscles to the highest degree for the best result while only spending maybe a total of two hours a week in the gym instead of the usual 10 to 15. But if you are an individual who likes going to the gym for mental clarity and to unwind and decompress, well then high intensity training might not be for you. But when the time comes and you've got a busy life and you find that it's hard to actually make it to the gym, that's when you gotta start doing high intensity training. So that's it guys. In a nutshell, volume. Fine for enhanced people, high intensity training, optimal for natural. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop a new video. And if you wanna learn more about exercise and expand your knowledge so that way you can get much better results, go ahead and click the link in the description, join my school community. I post several videos every single week going deep into detail about exercise physiology, workout program design, nutrition, pretty much every everything that everybody needs to know to optimize their results. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.